telling me down there today they were catching bass at 16 feet and walleye at eight. There you go. Yeah. Another pike or a walleye? I don't know. Might be a bass then. I saw it down there. I think it's a bass. Boy, I heard yeah, it was a bass. bass. Nice bass. Yeah. Nice bass. Oh yeah. Right on, Jimmy. Yep. Smallmouth. That's a smallmouth too <laughs> there. <laughs> smallmouth on a roadrunner. Look how yep. pretty that fish is. Look at that smallmouth, man. <laughs> Lackliff Procroy. Fishing out his up fishing lodge. This lake is, oh, look at the size of that smallmouth. Look at the size of that smallmouth. That's a giant. That's a giant. This lake is right on the Minnesota Canadian border. Boy, that's a pretty smallmouth right there. I mean, he is a dandy. He is a dandy. There was a couple come up with him. Yep. Come up off the bottom with him. Look at that fish. That is a beauty. That is a beauty. Tell me to get him, Jim? Yeah, well, uh, the reason I was going to let you get him is so I could kind of keep try to keep the boat up here where it by our buoy. I've only got eight pound test line on there now. I got that's monofilament on there. Yeah, I got braid on that rod that you're using. Here. I'm trying to lose my fish, Les. Yep. <laughs> Let me see him here, buddy. That little roadrunner hooked him, didn't it? Oh man, look at that. Look at that. That's about a five pound smallmouth right there. That is a beauty right there, man. That is a pretty fish. I'll just use the motor to get us back up there. Look at that smallmouth. That's a five pound smallmouth. Les, let me give you my camera real quick. Zup's Fishing Lodge has been around for 80 years. 80 years. It is amazing. There you go. I think it's set up there. I think all you have to do is. Uh... There you go. There you go. Back there taking my pictures. Les, whitefish. Get this, whitefish, man. I'm telling you, I told him, I said, no wonder you're such a good fisherman, Les. <laughs> if my name was Houston Fish, there ain't no telling how good I could be. Whitefish, yeah, what a deal. If I hold this right there around those rocks, there's some rocks down there at 30 feet that we found, we found with our Ray Marine. We're seeing those rocks on those locators. I got them set on down vision right now. We can see those rocks really, really good, and we can actually see fish down there. So we're only using a little 8-ounce Roadrunner. It's all we're using, a little 8-ounce Roadrunner. And we got it down there, right in there, and I'm kind of holding it in the wind with my trolling motor and uh, keeping it right in there where I can just, just fish it real, real slow. And it, just out here in the middle, 30 feet, no way you could find these fish without a locator. No way you could find them. Another one. Another one. Right on, Jimmy. No, oh, big smallmouth. <laughs> I guess I just will go ahead and let it drift with the wind. We'll drive a boat back up there. Watch him coming up. <laughs> Another big smallmouth. <laughs> I love it. A little one eighth ounce roadrunner. Wow. That's not near as big as that other one. He's still a large one. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. He says, I don't want your thumb in my mouth. You want me to stick my fin in your mouth? <laughs> Golly, can't quite get him. He says, one of us got to have some relief. Look at how, look at his belly. Look at the belly on that small mouth, will you? Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> Golly, that's pretty. That is, that's some good Canadian sugar right there, <laughs> or Minnesota sugar. This fish probably goes back and forth. <laughs> Woohoo! Les gonna drive us back up there to that buoy. There's a fish right that one there. Already? Right yep. on, Jimmy. Right off the bat. Yep. We moved over here to 25 foot of water to another ledge. This is all locator fishing. You gotta have good locators to fish right here. That fish felt pretty heavy. I don't know really what it is. It might be a big small pike. Mouth, Probably a big giant smallmouth. He hadn't jumped yet though. There he is right down there. Look at that smallmouth. That's a pretty one. That's a pretty one. <laughs> I mean, as soon as that roadrunner hit the bottom, he got it. 
Come here, baby. Now. I've only got eight pound test line on here, eight pound test grand slam by high seas. Come here, baby. That's the way to break it. <laughs> My little Jimmy Houston camo combo rod that Les has got back there has got got 20 pound test uh, high seas braid on it. Look at the green up here, isn't that pretty? That is just that's gorgeous. Woohoo! I mean, gorgeous, absolutely incredible. Well, it's getting so rough out here. It's really kind of hard to hold with a trolling motor, but I've got I've got. Really good batteries in here. I got big Duracell AGM batteries, and I got a 24 volt trolling motor on this boat. I upgraded the trolling motor on here to 24 volt, and it really makes a big difference. You want to you want to get as strong a trolling motor as, as you can, really, in just about all kinds of bass fishing. You can always use a lot less in full power, but if you ever need more power, you got it. Got one, Jimmy. You got one? No. Didn't take long, did it? No. <laughs> My first cast. Yep. Oh, nice smallmouth. Nice smallmouth. Oh! Put it on. That's what you call. That's what you call perfect, right there. Yep. You got all the. You got all the fun out of it, and uh, this is gonna eat that little one you were talk, talking about being so big there a minute ago. That's a nice <laughs> smallmouth right there. Now he's bending that pole. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That might be a gorilla right there. That's a that's a that's a fish right there. Come on, baby. Might not be even be a smallmouth. He's staying down. He hadn't tried to jump or anything. If that fish comes up at these two pounds, I'm gonna use them for breeding purposes. <laughs> Look at that. Is that a lake trout? Is that a, if that's a smallmouth, this is a six pounder. I'm telling you, that fish is long. It's a lake trout. It's a lake trout. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's a, a walleye. big walleye. Big walleye. <laughs> Look at the size of that walleye. That's not a normal size walleye, is it? Huh? Is that the size walleye? Is that the size walleye you catch here? Yep. Really? Yes, sir. Holy cow! That's a that's a five-pound walleye. Holy cow! That's huge. Look at the size of that walleye. Got him. Oh. <laughs> Look at that walleye. Look at that walleye. Up and down. Yeah, Les. <laughs> Woo! Gotta be careful kissing these girls. <laughs> wow, that was a good walleye. Man, oh man, oh man. That's what I'm talking about. Woo! I see why these people, you know, I signed the guy's hat. I, wait a minute, wait a minute. I signed the guy's hat. There at the Zuffs today, this morning they were leaving. They've been here all week. They said they caught two, three hundred fish, old black and chartreuse, and uh, and they were leaving. And he signed the hat. And he said, "You see this hat here? Look at that number on it, 36." And I said, "36." I said, "You play football or something?" He said, "No, nope, 36 years I've been to Zuffs. 36 years he's come back. That's the reason they come back. Five pound smallmouth." Five pound walleye. Huh? Oh. I'm 34 feet at the top at the front of this. He acts like a pretty good one right there. Uh-huh. Never has jumped, has he? Nope. That's the it. <laughs> Smallest one of the bunch. What are you talking about, Liz? Oh, right. Hey, they're all good ones. I was actually thinking a little larger though, just just to be honest with you. <laughs> Boy, they're down there. 34 feet, 34 feet, man. I believe that's gonna be a wasp of smallmouth there. Yep, here he comes. <laughs> Coming up, oh, look at that smallmouth. Look at that smallmouth. Woo he is fat as a butterball. I'm talking about a butterball. Look at his belly, look at his belly. Look at his belly. Holy moly. <laughs> His belly is, looks like mine. <sighs> After you be here at Zepps for a couple of days, you, you have a belly like this for sure, no matter what. God, can't. 
Look at the belly of that fish. Look at that booger. Will you look at that booger? <laughs> look at that. Look at how his belly pooches out on both sides. Holy moly. Yeah. Come here. <laughs> Sometimes you got to kiss your bait. <laughs> Woo, look at that big smallmouth. Wow, is that gorgeous? That is some fishing right there. God. That's about as small as, that's about as fat a smallmouth as I've ever seen. I'm talking, I'm talking that baby. That had a belly on him. Look at that. Yeah, 40 feet of 40 water. 40 feet of water. Look how far we are from that buoy, man. We are off on the edge of it. We are off on the edge of it. Look at that. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah. Looky there. We've been tipping these roadrunners with minnows, which I do that a lot up here in, in Canada. It seems like it's just kind of a, a neat thing to do. And it causes the bite to get, well, look at that pretty bronze back. That's why they call them a bronze back right there. And, uh, and it seems to help, especially walleye fishing, if it's a slow bite. Uh, but, you know, I've caught, caught 10,000 bass on a roadrunner without anything on it. I don't want to put anything but tails on it. And that's what I did. I thought, I want to do a drift without putting anything on it, just a straight, just a straight. These are all quality fish. We had one fish about two pounds. Everything else has been just big, giant quality fish. I probably need to retie. I got to retie because if I don't, I'm going to break my roadrunner off. Oh, look at that fish. Oh, right look at end. that big old fish. Look at that big old fish. <laughs> My gosh. That is some cool smallmouth fishing, man. I'm telling you. Good lands. And, and you know, nobody, does anybody ever, look how fat that one is. He's got a belly. Les, does anybody ever eat them out of here or does everybody pretty much turn them back? Just all catch and release. So no, nobody really no, eats Nobody them. takes them home. They want to eat them, they eat a pike or a walleye or something. Yeah. Or crappie, you, I mean, you catch all the crappie in the world here, yeah. just like. So you, you know, well, they got the big fat belly. So so they just they just finally eventually die of old age, I guess, huh? Yep. That's the only way they get, well, that, that's why the fishing's so good here on Lake LaCroix. That's exactly why the fishing's so good. Got another one. Well, that little that little that deal out here that that 40 feet deal out here is, is good. That was another without a minnow. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> he jumped three foot in the air. I mean, three foot in the air. <laughs> I don't need no stinking minnow. <laughs> I'm a bass fisherman. Come here, baby doll. I go to reach for him and we, and then we go down on the wave and, and he's two foot away. <laughs> My goodness. God, look at that, another big five pounder. The type of fishing that we're doing today requires some equipment, but it doesn't really require expensive equipment. As a matter of fact, that one of the things that you need for sure is a buoy. And these things are very inexpensive. I keep about eight or 10 of them in my boat because Quite honestly, I don't always get them all picked up. As a matter of fact, I write my name on all of them. So if on your lake, if you find one of these floating and it says Jimmy Houston on it, please send it back to me. I need them. And these things you buy in a pack for four or five. They're just a few bucks, not very expensive. We're using inexpensive rod and reels. These rod and reels sell for $49.95 at Bass Pro and at, and at Walmart. This is a Jimmy Houston Hog Hunter camo combo. Extremely good rod and reel for the money. Probably the best buy in the fishing rod marketplace today. And of course, the thing to be able to find the fish and find how deep they are and see them is a fish locator. Now again, I use really good locators, but they're not tremendously expensive. I use Ray Marine Dragonfly units on all of my tracker boats. And uh, I, they make them in a four inch screen, a five inch screen, and a seven inch screen. And the good thing is that they're very inexpensive. Started a couple hundred bucks and they're all less than a thousand dollars. This is a top of the line Dragonfly that I have. It's got gold GPS, it's got down vision, it's got regular sonar, split screen, top bottom screen, just about everything you want on a locator, and yet it's very expensive. So inexpensive, you can put it on aluminum boats, you can put it on John boats, you can put them on 
I even have one on my Jackson kayak. And uh, so they're very simple, very easy to use, and you don't need expensive equipment. But you need to be able to have a little patience, look and find structure that's offshore. And when you do, drop that roadrunner down there, catch you some of those big smallmouth.